Hello guys, this is build volume number four of my Hypercube Evolution Core XY 3D printer. I've been working on it for quite some time. It's just been a spare project, so I enjoy tinkering. But I wanted to post this video today to kind of show you where I'm at and what I have done. Um, anyway, this kit came from Ziltech that I bought a while back. I bought all the parts from them. It does not come with any sort of paperwork. And if this is your first time building a Hypercube, you're going to be kind of lost. They directed me at Thingiverse and YouTube to watch different videos on it. And I'll tell you one thing, once you get one built the first time, there on out it's going to be a piece of cake because you're not going to wonder where things go or where brackets go or if you're missing this or missing that. A few problems I had on a, had a few problems I had in earlier videos is that and watching other people's videos is that I thought it needed two end steps, two end stops on the X and the Y. It only needs one for each each of them, just like on a Cartesian printer. It does not need two. It does not need one in the front and the back and you know, same on the hot end. So that's one thing that I change and I'll have pictures here in a little bit that I'll show you. Another issue is on my 3030 extrusion, this horizontal rail here I had near the bottom and the bracket for my two stepper motors I had turned over on the top. And of course that changes the dynamics of all of this. And what was what I wound up happening is that once I got the bed plat bed on and I had it mounted and I went to home my hot in and check it for height, my bed was way too low. I wasn't up high enough. So then I had to put the brackets on the bottom, raise the bar up. Of course, you have to raise this other horizontal extrusion up and remount everything. And then I didn't have enough inside brackets for the top of my extrusion. So I went down to Lowe's and I bought these L brackets and I put on the top. That way it secures it so if I ever lift it or carry it, I don't pull it apart. That's something else that I had to change. Um, I had the 12 volt power supply on this that came from Ziltec. And then I realized that I had a brand new Meanwell power supply that I had bought from TH3D nearly a year ago. It's 350 watts. And since I have a AC heated bed, 350 watts is plenty of power for this printer because the heated bed isn't running through the board and you know pulling power from power supply. So I went ahead and I put a 24 uh, volt power supply. I had a Big Tree Tech 1.3 S SKR 1.3 on it and I had an issue once I had it hooked up I couldn't get the screen to work I tried three different LCDs I couldn't get them to work and then I had bought it a few months ago and I realized that I was out of warranty with Amazon and I couldn't return it so then I got back on Amazon and I ordered the SKR 1.4 turbo which has an RGB header on it where you can hook up RGB lights which I'll do in the future it's a 120 megahertz processor it's got four fan outputs. It's a much better uh, board to have on this. So that's what I wound up going with. I still have a few handles to put on the top, RGB lighting to put on it, a camera to put on it, uh, a few things here and there that I still have to do to it, but basically it's done, it runs. And I have a video I'll show you here in just a second where I'm doing a mesh bed leveling on it and I'm auto homing in the center. And then I have quite a few pictures that I took of it so you can, you can pause the camera or you can pause your TV, your camera, whatever you're watching this on, your phone, not camera. And I'm, none of this is scripted. I'm flying by the seat of my pants in my videos, so I trip over words. I forget things a lot. If I had a teleprompter, I could probably learn to look at the camera, read the teleprompter, and get every single word right like I'm a, a news, news anchor or a professional YouTuber, which I'm not. But I do my best. So anyway, that being said... In the pictures, or when I was building this cube, I would watch other people's videos, and I would read online, Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, wherever I'm at, and then I could just pause it, look at the picture, and I could study how the person was doing something. And one thing I noticed in a lot of videos is that even on the same video or in the next video after that one that the person did, that there you'd see changes that had happened, and the YouTuber or the person done the videos may not have mentioned that they made such a change, but you recognize it in a video. That's why I wanted to mention that this horizontal rail that you see in other videos being near the bottom is now raised up. Um, the brackets have been flipped over. This one has been raised up. So just wanted to make that clear. I think if anybody builds a hypercube for the first time, watch a lot of videos, uh, 
Google it, get on Thingiverse where you can get most of your parts that you have to print out. There's instructions there. And I don't believe there's any one video by any one person that's 100% accurate. Everybody has their own way of doing things and they do, everybody makes mistakes occasionally. Unless they've done more than one hypercube, then you might find a video where everything is 100% accurate for that size of cube that they're building. But based on the size of the cube, it, you know, certain things change here and there. Um, what else can I say? Uh, my extruder, I've got a tough extruder from TH3D that I put on here. Let's see, I have an easy ABL from TH3 that I put on here because I couldn't get the other sensor that came with the kit working properly. So I put that one on. Of course, it's got a 5015 fan, 24 volt. I just ordered another uh, smaller fan. Right now I have a, well I have a 24 volt fan put on here that came off an Ender 3 and then I printed out an adapter. So it's got a, a clone V6 hot end on it. And one thing about this clone V6 hot end that I really like, the block that's on it takes the barrel type thermistor. Now if you guys are familiar with all the Creality products, I'm not sure what all printers use them, but the bulb style with the two wires really sucks and you can over tighten them a lot and then they go bad, they're, they, they're constant headaches. The screw's too tight, too loose, you tighten it up too much and then you get a thermal runaway and you got to replace your thermistor. This barrel style is awesome, it's got a set screw that holds it in, hopefully I'll never have a problem with it. So that's really cool about this. Uh, what else? The LCD, I ordered a touch screen LCD, it's a dual mode. So if I want to go conventional like my Corelli machines or my TiVo, I can push the button and I have the, I have the knob here and I can change it or I can switch it over to touch screen mode. So it's a dual mode touch screen which is really cool on it. And, let's see, oh, the footprint on this. Let me tell you the footprint. Let's go with inches on this. So we got 22 and 3 quarter inches, almost 23 inches square. And tall, it is 29 and a quarter inches tall. And this is 400 by 400 by 500 build volume. Of course, your wires hang up taller than that, but if you're trying to figure out if I want to build a 445 evolution like Jerry did, how much room is it going to take up? Well, that's, that's his footprint. So... And then I printed some uh, little feet here to put on the bottom, which I might change those, I'm not sure. Then like I said, I gotta put the handles on the top, RGB lighting on it. You know, I'm teaching, and then I got a, a, a bed mat from TH3D here, they're blue mat. These things are awesome. Uh, here on the first, when I get a few dollars, when I get my pension check in, I'm gonna be ordering a flex plate to put on this, that way I don't have to scrape and pop things off on the build. I'll just put a flex plate on it on a PEI sheet or a bed mat and then I can just lift it off, pop it and go. But I have to wait till I get paid on the first to do that. So, and then I got a big giant uh, spool here, five kilogram spool from Ziltec. It's black PETG on a roller setup. That's going to be feeding this for now. This is just going to be for PLA and PETG. And I have a filament runout sensor from TH3D. Right now I just have a little dummy piece of a PLA, a PLA stuck in it so that it doesn't trip. Because I have such a huge spool, I don't need to have it hooked up all the time right now. But typically, with a filament runout sensor, whenever you're, you run out of filament, it'll trip the sensor, your print will pause, it locks out the steppers so nothing moves, and we'll just sit there idle. The bed will stay hot, and we'll just sit there and idle and wait on you, whether you're it, whether it's 10 minutes it takes you to get in there to replace it or 6 hours, 7 hours, it just sits there and awaits on you. You replace the filament, hit resume print, it will extrude, you hit a button, it'll, it'll heat back up the hot end, it'll extrude filament and then you hit resume print and it'll start printing again. I love these easy out filament run out sensors. Um, what else? The smooth rods. What do I want to tell about smooth rods? Well I got them greased, I use a white lithium grease on them. You can still see I have a little grease that I need to get off. All my wiring, I just basically put zip ties on it and zip tied it up. It ain't the prettiest in the world, but at least I don't have wires going everywhere. I've seen a few people online that have posted videos and it looks like it's me factory quality perfect and they have everything in the bottom and a cover plate over it and I didn't do that. I have two acrylic panels on the back that I've mounted everything on on the back which you'll see in the videos. And then I've got the power supply is grounded to the frame because it's mounted on acrylic. I've got one of the bed, the, the board, the motherboard, uh, I have one of the bolts also grounded to the frame and everything that needs to be grounded is grounded. So uh, since I'm on acrylic I just want to make sure I got all that done. I um, guess that's about it. And then I've got a uh, Capricorn tubing up here put on it. Or that could be tough tube from TH3D. I'm not sure if that's Capricorn or tough tube. I believe that's Capricorn because of the color. And I guess that's about it. So 
Uh, oh, please, if I didn't say this at the beginning, please like and subscribe. And I'm trying to, you know, get, get monetized. And I have like 1,100 and something people that have currently joined. I don't have enough watch hours. But then again, that's my fault for not putting out enough content. And I haven't had a live stream since January. That's been quite a while. And I need to get more stuff done. But I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. And all my friends around the world, uh, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere, uh, please stay safe. Tough times right now. Lots, of, lots going on. And, you know, I'm thinking about you. And I hope, you know, hope you stay safe. And, you know, keep coming back. Watch future videos. Ring the bell on my videos so you can uh, be notified the next time I put a video out. Well, let me roll some pictures here. Uh, I got a little, a little short video I'm going to show you, and then near the end of the video, I'm going to have quite a few pictures that you can watch and check out close-ups on how I did everything. And I sure hope that the guys building Hypercube are looking for ideas. They're going to like the pictures, and they might say, "Well, I like he, how he did that," or "I don't like how he did that." You know, like I say, there's no one person out there that has all the answers. There's a lot of bad information on Facebook quite often. There's a lot of smart people that post things, but then a lot of people that don't really know post things like they think they're an authority on it. So take everything with a grain of salt, get many opinions, watch many videos, and you know, make up your own mind. So I you know, really appreciate it, guys. So stay tuned. We'll check this out. I'd like to give a shout out to Brian, Ben, and Victor that helped me immensely with my firmware. On all my printers that I have here, I've been printing for a little over three years. The firmware I get from TH3D when I add filament runoff sensors or easy ABLs, and I only have to make minor, ch minor changes in Marlin. And this time I basically had to start from the ground up, and I had problems here and there. So thank you very much, Brian, Ben, and Victor, for helping me on my firmware issues that I had. I managed to get it all done. I'm not an expert by any means on uh, Marlin, nor will I probably ever be, but I understand it a lot better now. It's not that hard once you start getting into it. You learn what to set, what not to set. And, you know, download if you're, like on a, the Big Tree Tech, I got on their site, I downloaded their paperwork, and that explains step-by-step step how to do things. There's many people on YouTube that explain how they change things in firmware and how they set up things for different printers. And whenever you get lost, feel free to jump on a Facebook group, ask questions on Twitter. The, you know, everybody in the community is wonderful, and they're always willing to help each, help each other out or help you out with any problem that you may have. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Here very soon I'll be getting a bunch of prints done on this and I'll get them posted and we'll have another video. So thank you very much. Stay safe and happy printing.